Oh, uh, that's too funny. Oh, here she is. Here she is. We lost her for a minute there. Yeah, that's all right. Coming back. We're, we're going uphill now, so we can see the light at the end of the tunnel, literally and figuratively. There you go. We are ready when you are. Oh, did you already talk through the jam board? No, not at all. We were waiting for you. All right. Um, okay. so I can do the jam board if you want while you're uh, while you're getting to the top of the hill. Okay, I'm at the so, top of the hill, but yeah, if you talk through that, I'll pull up my other screen. Perfect. I'm not only going to talk through it, I'm going to edit it because it is no longer 7-1. It's definitely 7-15. And uh, welcome back to another Lifecycle Insights Friday workshop. Um, this week, uh, obviously, quick some quick housekeeping items. Um, new to Lifecycle Insights every Wednesday, one o'clock Eastern time. If you're fairly new to the platform, we just finished up week two of a four week revolving cycle. Um, all those um, calls are recorded and saved inside of Lifecycle Insights. If you just go click on the help button and search for welcome, there's some pretty good getting started advice in there. But this call is live in person uh, and someone there to answer your questions as you have them. So please feel free to come out and find us there. Um, and bottom here um we will be in build it at, at build it in new jersey the end of the month uh, i can't believe that one's on us already uh but it sounds like it's going to be a really really good really educational event so uh, uh out there um comp tia if you guys are going to be in chicago do let us know that'll be august 2nd through 4th um somewhere we have a sign up link for that i don't have it handy but uh we'll throw it in chat before the end of the call and then um it nation connect in november that's the big IT Nation every year. September will be at DattoCon in DC, uh, big, big in September, and we'll be at Seven Figure MSP in North Carolina in Q3. So lots and lots and lots of, uh, of travel for us. So if you're working with us on onboarding, if you notice a week blocked off in my calendar, you can probably guess where I am. Uh, but for those of you who are not, um, you know, feel free to let us know what events you're gonna be going to. We always like to hear where you guys are gonna be and what, what events you see value in. So please give us some feedback on that. Marnie, take All it away. Right. Sounds good. Well, hey, everybody. Um, so today we're, we said we we're going to, I even changed the Jamboard and it didn't update. So that tells you something. <laughs> um, I had put on there today, we're going to talk about optimizing uh, LCI, kind of maximizing your subscription. So we have some newer folks to the call that might get some of the early pieces on. And then we have some uh, well, we don't want to say old folks on the call. We definitely want to say more experienced uh, life cyclers on the call. Uh, and so along the way, uh, we have questions for you um, since you have since many of you have used all of the features and functionalities. Uh, hopefully you'll get something new along the way with that. But we want to ask questions around notifications. So yes, seasoned our seasoned life cyclers with open those of you in Maryland. Um, so we want to ask about, uh, and I'm going to throw a poll up there first. Um, this is just a quick, easy one. How would you like to see notifications? Uh, would you like, and this is multi-select. Would you like us to send email notifications to your inbox? Would you like in-app notifications? Or would you like a dashboard with headlines? Um, I'll wait a minute because there are quite a few of you on the call and would like everybody. I think we're missing an obvious one here, Marnie, which is tickets. Definitely should have been an option in that poll. To send tickets? To create a ticket. Or tickets or Slack. Tickets are where these guys work, so. Well, the other thing too is I think for me, it would depend on what I was being notified about as to how I would want to see the notification. Yeah, I am. Um, so my thinking was, if I at least started with this canned poll, since Zoom polls um, don't let me have open-ended responses, it would at least <laughs> knock people at the beginning and say, all right, pay attention to this. But we, I, Tricia, that's the kind of feedback we want to take, because I agree. You do, I, I suspect you don't want an email notification some, every time somebody's server um, you know, goes, <laughs> goes red. Uh, and then, um, but you might want an email notification about something else versus a dashboard in the platform that would alert folks. So, so that everybody gets to a closer playing field, I'm gonna go through 
um, five places in Lifecycle Insights where we think you may want some notifications. And then at the end of each of those five pieces, we will ask about notifications, but feel free to put in the chat at any point, um, any ideas that you have around notifications, headlines, et cetera. And Alex, remind me at the end, if I don't get there, also wanna talk about the business review scheduler um, so that maybe if you put it in the doc, I'll see it along the way. Um, so I am gonna share my screen. We're gonna start with, we're gonna talk through kind of where to see opportunities in Lifecycle Insights because we're feeling like uh, you may want insights into, I saw in the chat, actionable insights and opportunities. So we're gonna do three places, asset lifecycle management, user reporting, recommendation templates, assessment analytics. I'm gonna add um, scheduler to that and then two places in customer success module, um, The customer health and stack alignment. I'm going to show the doc for just a second that we are going to share later. Uh, you'll get it at the end of the call just so we keep some attention during the call. But this is kind of what we're talking through. So asset lifecycle management. You don't have to take copious notes on how to do the pieces that we are, um, that I'm going to walk through. Alex is going to put these in the chat and you will get this document that includes links to our help desk supporting documentation, any videos that we reference, and even we have a couple pieces of collateral that you could use to share with your clients. So that is um, the content around asset lifecycle management. And those of you that did not join me yesterday for the what do you mean shadow IT is a problem. If you're interested in um, some memes to do some marketing with. Uh, augment shared some funny resources there. So this is kind of- Marty, as opposed to copying all of this out there, I'm just gonna make this doc publicly yeah, available. It's already publicly available. Yep. You should just be able to copy the link. Okay. Perfect. Um, I was copying individual links, but I thought that was the wrong way to go about it. There we go. No, let's do the whole. So, okay, the first piece, and Alex, I'm now only sharing, I, you know, I've got the one monitor in the truck. So yep. <laughs> you can- uh, Help me along the way and remind me if I miss some pieces. So asset list, we really wanted to look at, um, you know, with the asset list, of course, we're looking at opportunities for asset lifecycle management and end of life pieces. So curious, again, this is where I need the chats to, to get engaged. What kind of notifications would you be interested in? Uh, right now, this is the one report that we can email to your clients. Uh, would you like notifications of um, when assets are overdue? Would you like on the dashboard um, and overall across all companies? So if you think I want to know across all my companies, anybody who's got, you know, n number of assets and number of servers that are coming end of life, would you be curious to know one of the pieces that we have across all clients is the data quality across all clients. Would you want to be notified of clients with best data quality score because you're ready to do a business review? Would you want to be notified for clients that aren't ready for a business review? Because if you're missing some data quality, if you're missing assets on the asset list, for example, you're missing opportunities into you know potential upsell and security concerns so i'll pause for a minute and alex let's look through the chat yeah so i'm going to digest this tim said assets going eol in x days or months and i think that's absolutely uh, valid because we want to be out ahead of it and getting recommendations to our customers 30 days 45 days 90 days out whatever the msp's best practices so i think that one definitely uh wins part of the conversation um to mike's point that makes a pretty good dashboard uh dashboard tile or dashboard notification of some sort um software licensing to be renewed probably would um i think it depends we need to split software licensing in half mark mentioned that but software licensing can be stored in two places in lifecycle insights if it's a configuration in your PSA, then it's just an asset and it shows up where a workstation or a server or anything else does. If it's an, uh, and, and that's for a purchased 
piece of software that you uh, replace every three years, every five years, whatever. So if you buy QuickBooks Desktop Edition, you pay for it once, you run it for three years, it has an end of life date and it goes away. That you treat it as an asset and we would show that the same with any other asset that's going end of life. The other one, the, the, the SaaS application renewal. So when, you're, when your Meraki license is, needs to be renewed or when you have to make your annual Salesforce renewal, um, I think those are things that, uh, that show up in contracts and subscriptions or need to be tracked there. So contract end dates, contracts ending in X days or whatever probably needs to be treated the exact same way, but be a different indicator. Does that sound on track to everyone? Feel free to pop your mics off and actually have a conversation instead of typing if, uh, if you feel like that's easier. You know, like the end of life and those types of notifications become noise very, very quickly. If, I agree. if you don't think about how to silence them appropriately. Uh, so I don't know the answer, but before we send too many notifications. Do you, do you think that it means that nice just having them on a dashboard makes it easier? Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Greg. Yeah, it would be nice if my life cycle end of life date, you know, I got a, a firewall with the life cycle of five years and I'm expecting to use it for five years, but the Cisco end of life, actual life is early. It's on the asset if that would notify me. Say that one more if you're time. already if you're already looking into giving a notification when the actual end of life, not the so the the manufacturer end of sale mm -hmm. notice, kind of end of life. If you're already looking into giving a notice on that, it'd be nice on the actual asset itself. If I got a Meraki firewall that I'm expecting to keep using for five years, but Cisco's only going to support it maximum three years, to to give me a warning there. I don't know about Meraki. I know actual Cisco gives us the end of life date and we will override the manufactured end of the, the, the assumptive end of life date with the Cisco date. I don't think the Meraki API gives us that information. Um, if I remember correctly, Cisco's polite, but most vendors aren't yeah, in general. That, that, that is a yeah. fair statement. So while folks think notification wise, um, one of the links that we have put in that- document, Actually, Marnie, hang on a second. I wanna go back to what Greg was talking about before we get off that topic. Sure. Um, understand that if you wanna track end of sale versus end of life as a different concept or, or not even end of sale, but end of manufacturer support, you can create a custom data field on, an asset, on the asset list and show a data field that you're tracking that is above and beyond what we enter there by default. So if you have a bunch of Meraki gear and you want to go figure out what the end of sale date is, you can add a custom data field here. Um, and we can even sync that data field back to ConnectWise if, or Autotask or whatever, if you have a specific field that it ought to track to back there. So that sounds that is like definitely... a good use of one of my few custom fields that I have left. That's... Yeah. I'm pulling up custom fields now so new folks can see where. So Alex, can you talk through custom fields kind of? So, I mean, custom fields are just as simple as it sounds. Um, you, you can create a, a, and you guys are used to doing this in Autotask or in ConnectWise or in whatever your other tools are. Um, you can create an extra field related to an asset. Um, and that extra data field then gives you the ability, whether it's numeric, whether it's a date, whether it's something else, to go back and add content that we hadn't planned for out of the box. Um, they can be mapped back to fields in, um, and Marty, we probably need to add a, and I'll take this as a, actually Mark, would you take this as a to-do item to put in a ticket to support, to ask them to add date to a control type here, because that really should be an option. Um, but the, uh, the ability to create a custom field here can actually map back to something in ConnectWise if you're already tracking end of life or end of sale, vendor end of life or vendor end of sale there, we could pull that data over as well. Or whatever PSA, not just yep. that. For whatever PSA, yes. Or we have to put in a request to have it map though, right? We can't do it ourselves. That is a support function today. Yep. yep. 
and you know our support takes forever to get to you so please plan at least two hours ahead <laughs> you guys have done that for me twice and it was really easy <laughs> um perfect yeah no i'm glad you came up with that suggestion on here because I'd, like greg you said that's a good use of your other uh that would be a good use. You are today limited to five custom data fields. That is a completely arbitrary number decided upon by support because when we started, the use of custom data fields was zero. Um, if you run out of custom data fields or if you're getting close, um, start nudging support and letting them know if they're not keeping track of it. You know, it's not necessarily a huge lift for us to add you an extra data field or two. Um, but so far, nobody has run up against that that uh, that uh, arbitrary limit. And when I'm in the asset themselves, the additional data fields pull into the detail view here. Right. And so financing, for example, is one of in, ours. In custom, in the manage columns, right? So if you want to then add it to the report, you could always add. So as Alex said, financing is one of our custom columns. I can take off a few of the others just so this will be obvious. And we should have an updated column that is financing at the end there. Don't have a lot interesting in it, but. <laughs> right, right, we have one or two leased assets, but. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, in talking about kind of the opportunities, we wanna give you notifications that will drive action and opportunities. That's exactly what we're looking for. So if we're looking around asset, end of life, et cetera, um, one thing I wanted to remind folks is that once you've cleaned up a single user's assets, you have a good sense of, okay, this is what I need to do across all of my companies. At that point, you should clean up data as best you can using asset ad hoc, because you can do this across all your companies at once. So if you're looking for, um, for example, all types, and I will grab everything that is a virtual server. This is one that, you know, we have talked about treating the same way for all virtual servers. When you generate this report, it's across all of your companies, as you can see down the left hand side. So if there's some data you need to clean up across all of your companies, don't forget about asset ad hoc. Uh, that is where and we added functionality to that, including the is missing and is not missing pieces. So keep that in mind um, as you're cleaning pieces up. Uh, the video that is on the doc I sent out, I told you at 15 minutes in, we go into detail for about five or six minutes on how to do that work in here. So if you need that, you've got it. Marnie, is that just cleaning up the LCI data or is it writing back to IT Glue? The only things that it will um, send back are if you have the, uh, the marks checked for send back purchase date or send back um, warranty date. Those are the only two things we write back if you have that checked off under your integrations tab. Thanks. Yep. Um, so Alex, we've got this recorded so I can take those notes around the, um, the notifications requested. Is there anything else around assets that folks are thinking you'd like to be notified on um, put that in the chat because next we kind of want to talk to the user list pieces. Chat's kind of quiet, so move along and we'll uh, we'll catch up. Go from there. Okay, perfect. In the user list, um, first, we've already had a ton of tickets put in to get this happening, so I want to make sure everybody's well aware. In the notification, is the release details around the new Microsoft Secure um, Score report. Uh, so for sure, under reports for Microsoft Secure Score, if you are interested in this reporting, there is an update to your API field. Um, fields that you would need to set in Microsoft, grab the, um, grab the doc and you know it gives you the updates you need to create. So if you are not, even if you already have your Microsoft 365 integration turned on, uh, you will need to update a field to get secure score. Uh, so that's the first piece around the user reporting. The next before you leave this screen, go oh, back to that screen. I like how you say point of <laughs> point of note on this on this screen. If you only see apps and identity and on a 32 row um, uh, configuration for secure score, 
it's probably because your client doesn't have any devices joined to Azure AD, which our test environment does not. If you go look at this and see way, way more rows than this and way more data than this, that is normal. It means that there's a device attached to Azure AD and you'll have apps, identity, and I believe security is the third function that shows up. But it's very likely that your clients have three blue bars at the top, three categories, and way more information here than we do. So don't be surprised by that. It's actually expected behavior. But if you have a client who's email only, not using Azure AD, not using other stuff, kind of like our demo tenants are, they'll probably look more like this. So just be aware. And and we recognize that score impact, right? That this that the high value score impact is where you can make moves with security for your clients. If we're thinking notifications, is there anything on the dashboard where you would want to see across all clients if we can address X, Y, or Z? Would you like to see a secure score notification around anything as a headline? And what would that be? I think I would like to see if a secure score dropped um, by a, a good amount for a particular customer. Um, and one of the things that they they mentioned in the release notes is we're going to we're looking at secure score over time. So you don't just get a point in time, but you're able to track it. So we could maybe setting cut scores that says, OK, if it's if it's dropped more than, you know, three percent, you want to be notified or um, something yep. like that over time. OK. Um, and I saw the note in chat. Or, um, but giving them the ability to track it over time, probably, you know, as we start to release more reports on it, they'll see value in that too, because that'll be a, a QBR conversation. Yeah. Are we going to be able to add these into recommendations at some point? Um, do you mean would, by line item, Trish, or? Um, yeah. Okay. So some of these questions we already have, um, uh, you know, are these in place? So we already have those questions in our assessments. Uh, it would be less checking or less things that we have to do if we could just grab some of these and have a recommendation in a particular area and, and say, you know, you, you would increase your score, you would, um, you know, increase your security and just be able to pull from here and add, add it into a recommendation. We talked about, um, you know, this, we recognize that they're basically giving us an assessment. Would there be any value in turning this into an assessment? Or I like your point, we could just add these as other items that are read in that link to recommendations piece, uh, or just put check boxes here like we have in our asset list, right? Where you could multi-select and build a recommendation right from there. So I think it bears a conversation around how this data is going to be used in the conversation flow. Um, sorry, somebody showed up here that is not supposed to be here. Uh, and my dog's really, really pissed about it. Um, so the, I think the conversation goes around, are these going to be talked about as individual assessment items in a conversation with your customer or is the higher category of apps or identity going to be the conversation point or what, or is the secure score as a whole going to be the conversation point? And I think if I was talking to a customer, we'd be down to talking about, um, are we blocking legacy authentication? Like, what does that mean in English? And how's it going to change your experience if I move that one needle? So I think this either becomes its own assessment or its own category in an assessment, but I'm interested to hear everyone else's feedback about how you'd have this conversation with your customer, because I think that's what matters. You and I, we can all parse this data 20 ways to Sunday. So for me, it would come in more as a full conversation around security. Um, I don't, you know, if we have a customer that has, you know, Google Works Place or, or something like that instead, then none of this applies for them. But, you know, we're already going in and we're, actually asking a lot of the questions that are in here already in our assessments. That's one less thing that it, if we can just pull from here instead of having those individual question, questions in the assessment, it would save us a lot of time 
when we're doing our assessments and it would all just fall underneath the security thing. Maybe we want to talk with them about adding in advanced threat protection and talking to them, the difference between plan one and plan two. And you, you know, this is why plan two might be more important for you because you're gonna get these features and, and functionalities versus, you know, plan one. Um, and, and really kind of showing the, the benefits and the additional security features that are all going to be available to them just by purchasing that one particular license. And it also, you know, reduces things that we have to do from the support side when they're more secure in their environment. So it reduces tickets and, you know, all that kind of thing as well. And similar there, I think, is the some ability, and, and I think it can be done through the assessments, um, but the being able to document that we've had the conversation with the customer and received their feedback so that when they've got these things that are read and in the future, they're like, why didn't we take care of this? And we can say, well, we've talked about this three times. Um, however, we can solve that. And I feel like assessments could do that if we could move them over and then obviously got all the functionality within assessments to track well, recommendations. Can't you have that? Don't we have that already maybe? And I could be wrong on this, Matt, but don't we have that with like a recommendation in that you could add an item from a, from an assessment. I guess if, I guess what you're saying though, is it would have to be in the assessment first. I guess what I was thinking is if it's already in the, if you have a question in the assessment that relates to that, you can have that same question mark four times. Like this has been read four times in that recommendation and they'll see every date that you had it on there is read. Maybe that's not, I, maybe I missed, maybe I, that might not quite solve it, but. The other thing in here Good. too is, is as time goes on, Microsoft is adding more things there's there's more things about teams in here than there ever was before and so to be able to i don't want to have to go in and look at secure score reports every single time and see what i should be asking my customers about and what i should be including in assessments there's things that you have to have conversations around you can't just change settings within teams without talking to the customer and saying here's what we'd like to do because it could break a process for them so we want to, being able to have the ability to pull from here rather than having to go in there and checking, you know, whether or not these things are already, you know, do we have all of the questions that we need to make sure they're 365 um, uh, tenancy is as secure as possible as new things pop up. This is a huge time saver to have this right there and to be able to pull it right into a recommendation. So Hi, it's Tim. Um, I'm going to probably get it wrong, which is assessments creates recommendations, not the other way around. Is that correct? And if that's the case, whatever path it is, the big question I think we're all circling around here is, great, we have this data from Microsoft Security Score. What do we do with it from two perspectives? One, presenting it to our client on these are things that need to be addressed and two actually making sure that they're getting addressed in a recommendation type thing right so you know what i'm hearing a little bit is we're all kind of circling around like this is really great info now what do we do with it yeah in my mind it's way more technical than a lot of what we want to put in front of an end customer from time to time mm. well, absolutely, and absolutely. I think that's where you can, you're hitting the nail on the head because we went and I don't know if you guys saw the chat on the side, but from, for, for us, somebody's got to go look at the nitty gritty detail, right? How you choose to talk about that and share with your client, two very different things, but internally it's impossible to keep track of, well, was that in place when I talked to the client last time? You, unless you've tracked it at the detailed level, you, you just don't know. And so what we ended up doing, and this may be something that LCI could help with, I don't know where custom fields could go or things like that, but basically we have a column when we've been doing, when we were doing this in Excel um, that basically said client impacting, client notification or client decision. And if it was behind the scenes, we just did it. Like we would just make changes, like you're getting this. And then the second one would be something like putting an external email notification. Oh, by the way, you're getting this. We'll turn this on next week. 
right? So we wouldn't do it until we told them that. And then the last one was, you got to make a decision on blah, blah, blah thing. Yeah, essentially, yes, yes, Tim. To, it, it, essentially, it's what layer is it? And so in the assessment, it would be, you know, I don't know if we would create a, it, for us, if I were to replicate what we're doing, I would have a category that says no client impact put to standard, you know, the next layer, the next layer. So I don't know if there's a way to tag, you know, those items, but we're shooting with, we're making those changes live because we've already reviewed and identified it's something we can change live wherever possible. I was just going to ask if tagging would help that because that is something mm -hmm. that we're working on next. So if you could tag oh, yeah. the item, which level of change management or change control you needed, right? To your point mm -hmm. that you just had, then to be able to search, right? And filter. And then frankly, if we tag it, the, the next step would be to report off of it, right? So I can see Alex that you're jotting notes along the way. So I assume that's what you've written down. You're muted, as you know. Um. Sorry, my dog's been being a turd. Um, yeah, yeah, I've got all that. Um, for those of you who are working on change control, you know, I feel like there's a there's a fine line between stuff that we should stay away from because it belongs happening in your PSA or in another tool and the things that we need to report on. But it, so I think we have to and correct, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I think there's a fine line of where we have to say, um, this is something that in another system, we're going to want to talk to you about over here. We're going to say, we want to talk to you about it before we change it, or we just changed it on your behalf. Um, and then that marries up nicely or needs to marry up nicely to a product, a, a process in another product. Maybe Marnie, the answer is we need to give them the ability from here to create a ticket, just like we do from assessment items to say, hey, based on this one, we right. change it so right away. Kick off the workflow where the workflow should happen type of thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to jump over to user list. So we're still on users again happy to see that chat fill up with ideas for notifications. What would you like to see in a dashboard, a headline, notifications around? Like you should definitely be notified if any of your clients actually look like our demo site with this much red, but let's pretend it looks like- There should be a good. dumpster fire icon that yeah, comes up yeah. when you, uh, when you log in. From yesterday, it's fine. It's fine with the fire going on behind you. Um, Okay, it should look more like this, right? But at that point, if somebody went to disabled MFA or if someone turned red, um, Tim says failed user sync, uh, what on the user, I have to say that recently we have had a huge uptick in folks using user reporting. People have been adding in all the Microsoft pieces, the secure score, breach secure now, augment the day, you know, augment went live on Monday and we had a dozen tickets Monday morning um, asking for augment access. So what types of notification? So Tim, you would want red stuff in here. I assume you all don't have nearly as much red as our, like our said, our demo site. And do we cover most of that with the secure score pieces because that's really where you're doing the work and this is just a an even more basic level yeah i think um a lot of this happens on the uh on the secure score side as far as security goes here is in my mind and everybody else again can correct me where i'm wrong but you know this is just the bigger conversation does this uh does this user show up in all the right places? How are they tracking against the things that we care about, et cetera? Okay, perfect. Alex, can you tell me what I had next on the list? Was it analytics across all clients? Um, report uh, recommendation templates. Oh, yes. Well, this was just more speed of if you're trying to do things across all clients quickly. So this was a combo platter. I'm going to actually start with assessments. Um, I'm surprised that we don't get more questions around analytics across all customers. So I'm going to go ahead and show this. Um, analytics across all customers is if they've been on the same assessment, right? You get, how about I grab the right assessment? 
you get all of the questions down the left hand side, all the clients across the top. You can flip flop that if you want. Uh, and then you get all of the scoring. So if again, if you're looking for insights into opportunities, would you like on the dashboard something like get well medical services has the lowest health score, right? Or your your top opportunities, your, your largest assessment, uh, your lowest assessment results are from get well medical services and home inspection or whoever. Would you want uh, inter internet security appliance has the least amount of um, you know, um, penetration you know, across your client base because that's the most red and yellow. What would, uh, if you were looking aggregated across all your clients, would you want notification around an assessment item that was scoring poorly, again, across all clients as opposed to an individual alignment, individual question rather? Um, so think on that. Then what Alex mentioned with the recommendation, if you're looking at this and you're thinking, well, we need to go have a conversation around internet security appliances across all clients. When you're in recommendations, when you go add a new recommendation, uh, there will be, if you have created predefined templates on the left-hand side, you'll see fill from predefined templates and you can just grab, you know, migrate email to Microsoft 365 and it will pull up the same, the name, the description, uh, the costs, any recurring costs, et cetera. Um, so that's, that's just for ease of use if you see opportunities across multiple clients. I'm looking in the chat at Matt and Andrew's comments. Yeah, realizing you can't oh. read that easily, but uh, uh, Matt, Harrison, if you could select one customer and then take away the names of all the other customers in a okay. way and then yeah. show average. So that would be not on a notification for you. Well, and that is my other question. Would, is there some value of a dashboard that maybe your clients could see that it, if we customize this dashboard, the main dashboard um, for a client view, where maybe in a list of, instead of missing data fields, right? But if we had where you ranked across all other clients on an assessment or something else, that, that would be huge. That would give you the advantage of being able to say your 37th place <laughs> competitive CEO. <laughs> we need to move you, move the needle for you. Yeah, Tim, custom dashboard is the way we are thinking to be able to um, have that, you know, to be able to customize it for you, for your clients. It'll be baby steps along the way. So the thinking is we first start with, um, you know, aggregated information across all clients, but that's definitely the, the path we're looking at. I, looking at it enough that development told us we could have this conversation in public. So that's a good, that's a go. good sign. That's a good leading indicator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, MRR per endpoint, Andrew, is actually something that, um, well, we do it per user over in the client success module. Um, it might be something we could add. Um, if yeah, the, we, the, the reason I ask is because we build differently for different managed service clients, um, if it's an endpoint or if it's a user count. So, yeah, I, I paused there just thinking about how we would identify what an endpoint is, but we could likely expose MRR per um, asset type and then let you choose the asset types that count, right? So you could pick yeah. desktop or laptop or workstation or, or yep. servers included, but I doubt your counting switches and access points. It was kind of where my brain was going. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Um, and Alex uh, put in the note, isn't client health in customer success? Uh, it absolutely is, but we're thinking if we create a high level dashboard, are there some pieces from customer success that we'd want to add to a high level dashboard? And as we make that customizable, the folks who have customer success would have visibility into yeah. more things than the, yeah. other, than the other folks. That's the, yeah. that's the customizable point of it. Yeah. Um, so both this in terms of health, opportunity by health, as along with stack alignment, I've got those two kind of at the bottom of the sheet, Alex. So I'm just kind of covering that. 
um, would you want a ranking of your top five opportunities, top five companies with top five opportunities and also um, services, right? So if it was filtered by your standard services, which, which services have your top opportunities? So I can see web filtering, email fish testing, right? And MFA have the largest dollar amounts associated to them if we started looking at them across all opportunities. And then Richard, I had even told Alex to remind me of this earlier, so I'm glad you're the audience plant in the chat. Um, alerts around uh, XBRs that are not in the scheduled stage. So I would love to hear thoughts on scheduler. And I know one of the things we talked about the other day uh, on it with a few folks is uh, first for this to preset with three months prior. Instead, so you can see if you just missed a business review in June that you have that you've missed one to catch up. But what information, you know, you can see we've got completed states, prep states, scheduled states, etc. If you'd want to see what was skipped or canceled, how many were upcoming, what do you like in the notifications around this? So Tim, Alex put a note in the chat with you, um, uh, maybe to take a look at Time Zest because if you create yeah. a ticket, Time Zest can kick off a calendar link. Um, I will say I don't see us putting the work in that it would take to uh, build account to, to build back scheduling when when Time Zest makes it easy and free, and there are so many other feature requests that uh, that, that I think drive more value. So Jill, um, oh, Richard put in up the missed QBRs, a pop-up on login and the notification in top right. Oh, for upcoming or missed. Okay. Yeah. folks that are not scheduled in email, Trisha, for the QBRs? Is that for a monthly list? Yeah, I'd like to just kind of see at the end of the month which customers didn't actually um, uh, complete them. Uh, we, we have a pretty rigid um, schedule for yeah. uh, ones that have to be done and when they have to be done. So when they get missed, it creates a lot of additional work in other months for a lot of people. So yep. understanding when things were missed throughout a month so we can track back and see what happened, why weren't they missed, was the, at least the work completed and that kind of thing. Yep. Can you, can you expound on that a little bit, Tricia? Just only, I only ask because I'm actually kind of curious to talk about this internally. What I know this is a little bit off topic, maybe this is the place, but like, what's the strategy around how you schedule your your QBRs or XBRs? So part of how we schedule them is, you know, kind of what's the monthly MRR in the customer and how much change is either needed or happening within a customer. And we kind of take a look at how often we do QBRs. Um, we have we have three different roles that kind of participate in there. So we have um, a technical person that is validating that all of the questions are accurate, uh, accurate. We have another person who's looking at recommendations and things like that and kind of putting together the review from a business perspective. What does the non-technical user want to see? Um, and, you know, as far as like budgeting and recommendations, and then we have somebody else who's you know, kind of at an account manager level that kind of comes in and um, make sure that all of the budgeting information is actually actually accurate for that customer as far as life cycles. Um, you know, when are we replacing laptops versus desktops? And what is the price that that customer typically pays for one of those types? types of things. And it's three different people that are working collectively to put together a review that's, you know, going to be valuable to the customer. And because we have three different assets, uh, three different resources that are kind of going in there working, and we have probably a 100 and 
25-ish customers that we're doing these for on a regular basis, um, we, we can't miss. So when, when we miss, well, first of all, it impacts our sales, right? Because recommendations are, um, you know, they're, they're driving improvements in, within the customer environment, but it also impacts sales. So when you miss these, sure. then, then you're, you're slowing down that process. And also the customer can't properly budget and, and get a good understanding and, and they don't learn, can't, they can't prioritize, but because we're doing so many and we have multiple resources in there, like the timing and all of that, we, we really need to make sure that um, we're not overloading it becomes a capacity issue really quickly. Yeah, yeah. And we want to make sure that sure. we're not overloading a, a, a particular resource um, when they're working. So we don't want any one yeah, yeah. person to be doing, you know, 12 of these in within a month. You know, we want to make sure it's spread out between the, the different resources. Uh, guess I'm working too hard. But that, no, thank you. I appreciate that. That was that was good insight. So a lot of what I've heard boils down to daily or weekly or monthly summaries in email. Um, I don't know if everyone here has used Confluence, but Ma Marnie, my brain keeps going back to that Confluence email summary that just says changes in the last 24 hours yeah. and a list. Um, I'm imagining that a world in which we have a checklist that they can say, include in my summary email, check, 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 check. Right, and then ignore the stuff they don't want. Yeah. And ignore the stuff they don't want, but they could build a custom summary email and say monthly, Trisha can get her list of these are the jerks who screwed up your schedule. But daily or weekly, folks could get here are the contracts that are coming up for expiration in the next week, or here are the, um, you know, the other things that are happening at a certain cadence. Um, so if they could set two or three alert emails um, with with custom content, that might be the the really the bee's knees for how to handle this. Um, of course, it's all easy to sit here on a without having to build it all and say it would be yeah. easy. But um, and Nick will have that cranked out by Monday. Um, <laughs> but that's what I keep hearing over and over. Like I feel like that's the recurring theme. Yeah, the options for it too. Um, I'm curious if any of that would be emailed also to, is there anything that they would, that folks would want to see as a notification to a client um, or would the ability to create a customizable dashboard with the security view that a client might see versus what um, you might see? Yeah, Richard, that's exactly the 400 alert thing is just, you just ignore it, right? It's complete noise when you have so many things coming through. But if you had a dashboard. <laughs> Martin, you give the example of the competitive CEO for showing aggregate data. Yeah. Um, with security questions specifically, I think more often it's not so much about am I in fifth place or ninth place as much it is, am I in the safety of a mob by turning on MFA or am I ahead of uh, everybody? Yeah, and yeah. being able to just show that would be yeah, yeah. very helpful. Okay, I like it. You know, it's interesting because when you start looking at that, you start and you're comparing against a group, right? Um, we've had this conversation in customer success around are we looking at it compared to the median number so you've always got half the people above you an average number where one really mm -hmm. high number could skew it or do you get to pick a status that is just going to go green you know if, if you get to a specific level so i think we need to we need to think through those pieces and to matt's point some of them the ranking would really help you in the conversation and we want to make sure we get the right ones um Listed right that way. would define yeah. that way, ranked the right way, so that it empowers you to have the conversation. Yeah, I think Alex in the chat, absolutely, it's the keeping up with the Joneses for security. Alex, you're gonna have to change your name from now on when you log in here because I think she's talking about me, and then things get weird. I, know, I get confused easy. Alex in the chat, yes. <laughs> yeah, I know it happens all the time. <laughs> We only Too many have Alex's about, in IT. I was going to say, we only have 15 to 20 Alex's, I think, in the, in the system. Um, 
Tim, when comparing it's only against our own clients, what across all clients? So I'm curious, would folks like us to um, compare across all clients to benchmark? You mean so I can shame myself when I'm not living up to the expectations? Yes, of others? we can also use competitive exactly FFPs. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I actually, that would be interesting. I think uh, at least I, I guess my, I don't personally care that much, but I think my higher ups do because, you know, they're part of a group like Evolve and they do compare those types of things. So it would be interesting, I guess, to see where uh, we rank. I know that my company, I've, I, I feel like they would feel like, hey, this is cool because we can see this thing and now we can, you know, see where we're, are, you know, are we, you know, ahead of the curve behind the curve or, or whatever you know whatever it looks like yeah yeah you're right richard that's exactly the, the peer groups do it um and it's certainly you know we have the data we have not we have not looked at that yet but it is one of the pieces that nick did ask if folks would be interested in so yeah i mean a rising tide lifts all ships and that's what that benchmarking does for you right so that's makes sense having come from education where they just slap everybody's student results uh <laughs> on on public everywhere and then rate folks against it, it i'm very used to having things benchmarked against um you know the rest of the state and country etc yeah and it could be an absolute selling point tim to your point on uh you know for your services right definitely uh, I know for a fact Alex jumped off to take a call because I saw that our uh, company line rang, um, but we only have a few more minutes anyway. So you have the doc that we sent out. So those of you that are new to, um, you know, new to any of this work, take a look. And if you need any one-on-one -on -one support, always feel free to reach out and, uh, you know, ask for a, a meeting so that we can talk through any of it. If any of you have more ideas, just send to info at lifecycleinsights.io and we're aggregating all of these. We're re-ranking again our, you know, our product priorities uh, as we head into, um, you know, as we start to wrap up our Q3 pieces. Uh, one other piece, we, I talked last week about the fact that we're going to start pulling CSAT data in so we can use it in customer success. Uh, we're talking to Smileback. Uh, we've got the auto task surveys and the uh, ConnectWise surveys that we're looking at first. And we took everybody's vote from last week, heard a lot of customer thermometers and crew who, et cetera. Are there any notifications or dashboard pieces reporting that you would like to see around customer satisfaction? Thanks for grabbing that, Alex. Client health drops, biz rating. Thank you, David. Alex, I was just bringing up the uh, just the score, maybe the option for the last ten comments. Okay, that's the CSAT. You know, this we're getting smile back, etc. Alex, that's what we we're, we're talking about while you jumped on. Perfect. Uh, well, like I said, put anything else you've got, send an email to info at, and we'll continue to aggregate and share with the product team. Uh, I super appreciate everybody jumping on and having the conversation today. Alex, I'm sure has taken a page of, I would say notes, but more likely several scrolls of uh, his iPad OneNote. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Thankfully, Tim, I am parked. My husband's already at his aunt's pool, which is where we are. So, uh <laughs> made it here safely. <laughs> well, have a great weekend, everybody. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.